Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you, phone. Uh, it has been a hell of a day. It really has. And uh, just a notification. And so I got a coffee here. Mm. Bit late on this coffee time, Scarborough, and I do apologise for that, guys, but. I have been very, very busy of late uh, dealing with uh, a new medication for my mental health and a whole bunch of other stuff. And um, while my body was adjusting, sorry, while my body was adjusting to the meds, um, a video came across my feed on YouTube about fem cells. And I'm like, is that some new form of stem cell? thing uh, no apparently uh, there's a thing called incels which is involuntary celibate men and there's a female version called fem cells which is involuntary fem uh, uh, celibate females and i was like okay so uh let me see because guys have chosen to go their own way migtow men going their own way and become celibate women are like well we can't let men have all the fun and so they've decided to do the exact same I was like okay can men not have can can we not have can we not have one fucking thing are men not allowed to have one fucking thing no of course we're not we're not allowed to have anything we're not allowed to have happiness we're not allowed to have peace we're not allowed to have anything y women just want to fucking destroy everything not all women not all women, let me make this abundantly clear, not all women, not all women, just particular women who are total fucking cunts. And for some reason, in this documentary I was watching from Channel 4, so it's biased already, they had a woman interviewing femzels who she found said, oh, I didn't see any violence, I didn't see anything wrong, while she literally was showing something on the screen where there was a post of a woman saying that all men should, all men, the moment they're born, should be put into a prison and have to earn their way out. Right. So you think that First things first, if you literally just said, well, there, I don't see anything wrong with that, replace the word woman, a uh, man, with woman. Especially if you're a woman. Oh, now you got a problem with it. It's okay when it's referring to your gender, but it's, you, you know, you have a problem with it when it's referring to you or your gender or your dog in that fight, but when it's referring to someone else's, you don't care. That is called blissful and willful ignorance and if you suffer from that stay the fuck away from me because what's good for one is good for the other i don't care about incels i don't care about fem cells i only found out like i said I, i'm only talking about it because it's fresh on my mind and the fact that and all these so-called fem cells that they interviewed happen to be irish with green hair Engaged ears that probably smell like cottage cheese because you bitches never fucking clean your damn ears out Which is why I hate gauged ears Blech. I'm sorry. I don't care how hot you look if you've got gauged ears. It's a no from me dog I don't care how drunk I am. I am NOT putting my dick in you Sorry, but no you want to fuck up your center of balance. You want to fuck up the sym the. You want to fuck up your center of balance, and you want to fuck up the symmetry that is your beautiful face by making your ears look like fucking sky satellite dishes from the nineties on the side of a council estate. Fine. You do you, boo boo. But I fucking sure as well won't. All of that aside. All of that aside. How are you? You good? I'm good. I'm doing pretty good. Um, 
like I said, I'm starting my new medication, uh, so that's fun. So I'm finding a balance. Uh, one of the side effects is, is it makes me incredibly, incredibly tired. Because uh, my body, my brain has to um, figure out how to handle the excess one or the other. It's not endocrine or whatever. It's, yeah. So my body's having to flush it out and how it does that is through sleep. <clears throat> this is why when you wake up you feel refreshed. It's because your brain has to literally dump that amount of whatever it, I think it's endocrine or something. It, it's 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 a byproduct of your neurons firing, very similar to how when you watch electricity arc, ions are released into the air. So basically, it's like brain ions. Um, I'm not a doctor, so don't fucking quote me on this. Don't fucking fact check me or some shit. But the point is, all right, I feel bad for these women. One of them turned around and said that she asked a boy out when she was 14 and he said no. And since then she's written all boys off and she's 28. Bitch, that was 14 years ago. The fuck? That's just sad. That would be like me giving up every fucking woman on this planet because I, stubbed, I, I, I stepped on a piece of Lego that my daughter left on the floor. Make that make fucking sense. Make, make it make sense. Connect the fucking dots for me. Because I know it's supposed to look like a unicorn, but it's really starting to look like a fucking... Something else that I can't say on YouTube. Reduced automotive timing, otherwise known as retarded timing. There you go. <sighs> Other than that, I'm good. Hot weather. Boo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, boo. Um, schooling's coming along nicely. I'm taking a little break because uh, I'm, I'm ahead of the class. I'll be back at it. What, today is Tuesday? Is today Tuesday? Wednesday. It's Tuesday. I will be back at it um, Thursday. So I'm taking a couple of days break, so I'm going to be able to do this video, maybe even play a little bit of World of Tanks, maybe even stream a little bit of World of Tanks, I don't know yet, but it will give me something to do, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm good, I'm doing pretty good, um, trying to figure out some finances around so I can make it to uh, Newcastle Pride, uh, I've been invited to go by a friend who I absolutely love and adore, um, and I um, hate to say it, but it looks like it's not going to happen. Uh, I was waiting on a loan that I gave someone that was supposed to pay it back to me yesterday. And they haven't. And they haven't even messaged me. Which is unlike them, because they don't flake. But for some reason they're being flaky. And I kind of needed that money to pay for my coach ticket. My Megabus ticket. Up to Newcastle. Because I'm not paying 180 fucking quid for a train ticket. That is ridiculous. Why is it only costing me 20 euros? 20 fucking euros to fly to Germany. Make that make sense. I can fly to Germany. I can literally get on a plane right now. Fly to Germany. For 20 fucking euros. 20 fucking euros. Which is about 21 pounds. Yet yeah, it's fucking a four hour journey, four hours, four fucking hours, and three train stops, so I've got to change trains three times, yeah, to get to fucking Newcastle, and it's 180 quid, and that's not even first class, that's coach, when it's 24 pounds and change with the Megabus, again, Greed. Greed, motherfuckers. Greed. 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 I'm not against capitalism. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not against you making your dollar. Okay? Make it ethically. Pay your fucking people a decent wage. I'm all about that. I am. But you motherfuckers haven't laid down a single new piece of train track between London and Newcastle in how many fucking centuries? 
So those tracks are still there. Yes, you paid, you maintained them. That's not laying down new track. That's not. That's not adding new new train stations to the stops, is it? No, it's not. That's not upgrading or modifying or buying new fucking advanced trains. Yada 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 yada. Like like uh, I I would love to see a bullet train that would take you from London to Edinburgh in like twenty minutes, like you can in Japan. That will never happen. Never happen. Never happen. Never, 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 never happen. There are still there are still industries in the UK that own personal trains and use them on our train tracks. That is why some of the train tracks that have been laid were meant for coal factories, steel steel mills, things of that nature, so that they could get you, or even trade hubs, so that they could get stuff off of boats on the trains and into cities where there was warehouses, things of that nature. Those are still being used. But by companies moving chemicals and, and, and various other things. So this is why you can't get a fast train on a dedicated track. Because we've not put any new tracks down. So please explain to me why the fuck the CEO of a, a, a Great Northern... Great... What was it? Great North West? Uh, great... <laughs> Here we go. GWR silence broken on pay. Uh, he annually annually gets four percent increase each month on his fucking pay. Okay, he gets paid a hundred and twenty six a thousand pounds a month. Why? Why, why, why can we not do the Japanese model? And most people are like, oh, what's the fucking Japanese model? I'll tell you. The Japanese model is, and I quote, when a company that is, is, is being run in Japan starts to lose money, do you want to know who takes the pay cut first? The bosses. You want to know why? Because it was their fuck up. It wasn't the employees. It wasn't the line workers. Case in point, Toyota. A couple of years ago, um, well, more than a couple of years ago now, Toyota was losing money hand over fist over their Prius. Everyone knows the Toyota Prius. The Prius is not cost effective, okay? It was costing Toyota so much money. This is why they don't make the Prius anymore. They don't make the Prius hybrid anymore. It's no longer made because it was costing Toyota more money to make it than it was to sell it at a price point where they could sell it, okay? So they stopped making it. And in doing so, Toyota got fined by the Japanese government. And do you fucking know who took the the first person to take a pay de decrease to help pay the fine off faster? Was the CEO. He didn't cut programs. He didn't cut. He didn't cut fucking work hours or anything else for his for the actual line workers or anything like that. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. He took a fucking pay cut. They call that the Japanese model because they are the fuckers in charge. They are the ones who need to fall on the sword first. It's called an honor system, and that is something America and England need to fucking pay attention is called taking accountability do you fucking understand that validate your pay being that each month please and if you can't you don't get paid that it's that simple when your business starts losing money your pay goes down and i'm not talking about your and there's another thing in Japan, they don't have parachutes. And then, what the fuck do you mean they don't have parachutes? In a business term, if a CEO, say Jack Dorsey, who owned Twitter, when Jack realized he was running Twitter into the ground by censoring everybody, and Elon came in to buy it, one of Elon's stipulations was that Jack did not get a parachute payout. And what that means is, it means Jack, within the last 30 days of the contract being signed and the handover starting, Jack could have literally just tanked the stock, tanked everything else, and that no matter what, 
when he bails out of the business, i.e. bailing out of a plane, he can pull this golden parachute and money just comes raining out the sky for him so that he's financially set. Okay? Japan does not have golden parachutes for any kind of CEO. If a company dies under a CEO's watch, it is on him. Again, on a fucking system. It is not communism. This is what a lot of uh, Western capitalists and, and, and whatnot will tell you is that the Japanese honor system is, ca is, is communism. It is not. It is called taking accountability for your fucking mistakes. This is why I loved living in Japan when I did. Because, if, thank you, even my landlord, when she realized she messed up on something and I got fined for it in Japan, when you rent property, you can only do certain things to the property, especially if they're historic buildings like the one I was staying in. If it's a historic building, it is up to the owner of the building, but the tenant can be fined. So basically, uh, Japanese, they, they have a, a historical ordinance company. It, it, long story short, they have a, a branch of the government that goes around and checks buildings, like, like temples and various other things, to make sure that they are kept to a certain maintained standard. And this includes uh, uh, buildings that are rented. And my building happened to fall. My, my building I rented happened to fall under this uh, uh, um, thing. And so they knocked on the door. They spoke to me. Thank you. They spoke to me. And it was, you know, uh, uh, monahan san and they explained it to me, and, they, and, was like, and it was like a fucking 80,000, I don't know, it was 100,000 yen fine. God, what is 100,000 yen now? Um, um, oh my god, it was almost 500 pounds. Jesus Christ. That's a current rate. So if we go back... Uh, if we go back, to then, oh my god, it would have been almost 800 pounds, Jesus fucking Christ, that was like a month's pay, anyway, um, so long story short, I, I went to the landlady, I was like, listen, um, what's this about, yeah, I, I, because I didn't fully understand Japanese kanji correctly, I barely understand uh, understand it now. So, and she explained to me that this was a fine for poor maintenance on the building. She goes, and actually, this is on me. Let me fix it, please. I was like, what? You you barely have enough money to buy ramen and a few other things and whatnot. She goes, no, this is on me. I need to fix this. So she went to the department, the department of historical. God, Department of Historical something or other is really escaping me right this second. And so she went to them, she sorted out the fine. They came to me and apologized to me. They came to me and apologized and said, for, We're sorry for the misunderstanding. You know, uh, you're new to our culture, yada yada. And I was like, This is fucking amazing. I'm literally, I'm, I'm like, no joke, I have goosebumps remembering it. I legit have goosebumps so you can see them. You can fucking see them. I have goosebumps remembering it all. And and, and they apologised to me. I told them it was okay. Invited them in. We all had we all had uh, a sagi. Um, which is a Japanese beer. Very nice dry beer. Oh, it's beautiful. And um, we all went to a, a ramen noodle bar afterwards. You know, to, to make amends. Because that's what they do in Japan. To... to you, you, they were off duty before anyone else starts. It wasn't like I was getting them into trouble. And I even invited my landlady. I'm like, oh, I've got you. Come on, please. I want to pay for this. So we all had a uh, 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 ramen. Uh, she had uh, a pepper beef. I had uh, pork hot pot. Uh, um, and, and whatnot. And it was fun. We all had light. And, and while I was living there, occasionally I would see them. They'd look at me. They'd wave. And you know, I'd get, show them the respect that they deserve and whatnot. And when I told my landlady, I'm, I'm about to... I'm, about to, to head back to the States and whatnot. She was heartbroken. She was like, you're one of the most best tenants I've ever had. You keep your place clean. You respect our culture. You you, you sat and watched Japanese game shows with me, which is hilarious. 
if you ever get a chance there there was what was it it was called happy something um happy hour that's the one mondo happy hour that's what it was called mondo happy hour and we would sit there and watch and she would laugh and i'm trying to figure out what's going on and catch up and like oh yeah yeah i get it now <laughs> yeah and she, she she and she would be more laughing at me and my my way of trying to understand things she showed me how to read a manga correctly where you read it from the back to the front not the front to the back and various other things she she this oh, i miss her so much oh oh you can oh, you I, I miss her so much rest her soul oh, heaven. please her her son was an engineer and um was very busy living in tokyo we were in uh, 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 in a small town just outside of Kyoto, and so she very rarely got to see her son, and um, it was a shame. Her husband had passed away. Uh, he was an, a, a, a train car engineer. He, he was a driver for the, the local train monorail in a city tram system, and he'd done that job for 45 years, and he had the same car, same customers they all knew him they he all knew them and it just it was so the way she was explaining it showing me pictures of her husband and whatnot and when he was younger he was a good looking man mm, he had the choice of the ladies Ooh, i bet Ooh. but the fact that i was willing to embrace someone else's culture completely and yet in my own country, we are forced to embrace others. It's just wrong. I get it. I do. This is probably why Japan has a, a lower birth rate. Guys, you got to start making babies. Come on. you got to start making babies. Hell, if it was up to me, I'd go over there and start making babies for you. But I love Japanese women. Oh. Oh. Mmm. I love Japanese women. Oh, they're so cute. And they're so tiny too. <laughs> I used to get stared at all the time on the train by Japanese women. I mean, I'm standing there in my suit, what not doing my job. I was personal security before anyone asked. I was a bodyguard, and because my my employer didn't trust um, Japanese people, he, he used to, like I'll, I'll have to hire outsiders. So he hired foreigners. Mm. He hired six of us. Two of them were one was German, no, two were German, one was Russian, me, and then, then, yeah, then then three Irish guys. So seven of us. Sorry, seven. And um, he was um, former yakuza, and so this is why he didn't trust Japanese people because he was afraid that some of them would, you know. So he had to. He was forced to rely on outsiders, which was even more of a dishonor to him. And yes, he was missing a couple of bits on his fingers, so he was definitely old school. And um, he was testifying against um, one of the rival yakuza clans, and so he, uh, the Japanese government. He didn't even trust the Japanese government. The government said, "We can give you police protection." He said, "Fuck no." You want a list of how many cop, cops, police chiefs, and judges we've got in our pocket? Fuck no. Yeah. I'm, I'm hiring my own, and he he hired my friend, who in turn said, Dan, do you want some, do you want some work? I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Got my visa all squared out for me, went over, um, did some work there. He went off to Dubai. Was it Dubai? No, he went over to South Africa, and I, yeah, South Africa, yeah, we, we, we both went off to South Africa first, then after South Africa, I, I went straight back to the States, he went off to, to uh, UAE, so yeah, we were protecting uh, oil, oil workers in South Africa, uh, he went off to UAE to go work for some big wig sultan, son of Brunei, whatever it was, I, I top of the head. And um, he's still there, but he's still there. He's been there for 20 years. Still there. 
contract gets renewed every five years. He has a, an entire company now. He hires, I think he's got close to about 60 or 100 blokes in his company now. Good luck to him. Good luck to him. I got, I got out because there's no point in me dying for money. Give me a cause that's not cash based and you'll have a soldier that will know no fear. Money can buy you a lot of things, but it certainly does not buy you loyalty to the grave. Confucius. Hmm. So, that was a little thing from when I was in Japan. Um, got to the States, fell in love, stupidly, to uh, my ex-wife, um, who I, still to this day, I wish no ill will on. Everyone's like, she's your ex-wife, why don't you, you... I wish no ill will to that woman. I may sometimes pop off and, and joke about certain things, and, and, but at the end of the day, that's all what it is. Deep down, I have no ill will for that woman. If she knocked on my front door right now, downstairs, and said, I need a place to stay, I would try my best to find her a shelter, things of that nature, and if that doesn't work, I would offer her my bed and I would sleep on the floor. I hold no ill will to that woman. None. She gave me an opportunity. A chance. And a country that I love and I miss so much. I miss America. It's my home. It is my home. That's my happy place. That's... If I could... Father out in heaven, home. Yeah, even a demon prays. I pray that I can someday make it back there. Someday soon. Real soon. To make it back home. Be in a country that I love. Breathe the fresh air of freedom. And be with the woman that I love. And be with my Evelyn. Take care of those three little monsters. <laughs> get my bloody hot rod shop back up and running I miss Fats Customs I want to get my hot rod shop up, back up and running I want to get a whole bunch of fucking 30s, 40s and 50s cars and I want to cut them up and I want to customise them and I want to finish them and I want them on display and I want people to want them and buy them and get my business up and running and yeah I mean it's a known fact. Let me let me explain something to you. All, all reality TV shows are like, we're going to lose the shot and all that shit. And, and I don't care about that. That's, that's petty drama from MTV and Di Discovery. And yeah, I don't care about that. If you're looking at starting up a shop that specializes in one thing, customs, hot rods, suspension, exhausts, whatever it is, Get yourself a car that is going to attract people, whether it be their age, the model, the make, whatever, and do your speciality to it. Use it to display your work. Take it to car shows. If people ask, hey, who did the muffler work? Who did the body work? Who did the paint? Who did this? Who did that? You're using the car as advertisement for your business. So yes, the first two to three cars that you're going to knock out out of your shop are not going to be customers they're not even going to be your well they, you're going to own them but they're not going to be your personal projects they're going to be used for advertising for your business if you do detailing buy yourself a lincoln or a cadillac or a really nice high-end car detail the shit out of it inside out make that thing shine like a fucking diamond in a goat's ass in the middle of the fucking sahara desert and I mean that. Reason why, you drive down the road, people see how beautiful, how crisp, how clean your car looks. They're like, dude, where'd you get that done? Oh, I do detailing. Here's my card. 
Yeah, hell, even have a little fucking sticker on the back of your car saying, you know, details are us or whatever it is or, or you know, shiny shiny goats, diamonds, details or whatever, you know. You see what I'm saying, guys? Work the problem. You don't have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars as a budget. You don't. Think around the problem. Work the problem. Nine times out of ten, the solution to your problem is in asking yourself the question out loud. How do I advertise my business? You advertise your business. That's how. Facebook. Twitter. Instagram. Post pictures of your work and what you do. Things of that nature. Tag a few people in it. Like uh, um, Mike Finnegan. Hot Rod Magazine. Whatever, whatever it is that you do. There are going to be people out there. David Freiberger. It doesn't matter. There's always going to be people out there that's going to appreciate the skills that you have. If you're a welder, tag Miller in it. They make welding equipment. They see what you can do. If they like what you can do, they'll they'll they'll, they'll add you to their page and say, "Look, this this is what this guy does." They'll probably message, "Do you use Miller Miller welders?" "Oh yeah, I've got a Miller 140 XL." Yada yada yada. They'll be like, "Oh, that's a good little welder." You know. We, we, you know, da, 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 try, you know, when you're ready to upgrade, try this one, we'll, we'll, we'll work with you, we'll give you a percentage off if you do run an ad for us or something, you know, you've just started up a partnership, a friendship even, work the fucking problem, okay, you can do it, it's all about your mindset, remember, Nothing good ever comes out of a negative mindset. Nothing negative ever produces something positive. You have to have a positive mindset. You're surrounded by the enemy. Oh, we're surrounded, Chief. Yeah, we are surrounded. You're right. You're right, pile. We are surrounded. We're surrounded by fear and dead men. Do you see? Do you see? all about your mindset you got to change it and if you can't find someone who's going to help you find a mentor okay find a mentor big brother little big brother little brother big sister little sister there are several mentorship programs out there that don't cost you a fucking penny hell uh, 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 go to Allison not sponsored go to Allison go on there there's several Programs you can get for free that help you with business management, business understanding, tax codes, yada yada yada. So, so in my work, I can't do my taxes. I use TurboTax. <coughs> Never use TurboTax. I swear the IRS made TurboTax just to fuck over the little man. Don't ever use TurboTax. Or always liquid tax, TurboTax, and there's squid something. Really. Never use those three. It's amazing you should never use H&R Block either. I used to use those before. They fucked me. Never use H&R Block. Those guys barely... I, I swear they use fucking... Uh, 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 <laughs> I swear H&R Block use TurboTax or some shit like that. <laughs> I mean it. I mean it. Get yourself an accountant. Hire them. Say to them, look, I need you for, my, the, for the tax season. Pay them. Okay? It is their job to help you. Pay them. Okay? Whatever they're worth, pay them pay them okay and this is another thing that people don't seem to understand so let me break it down for you why people say why is it so expensive to get this fixed or that fixed or whatever it's called manual labor when your clutch goes out in your car again i'm going to use a ford bronco for this when your clutch goes out in your 86 ford bronco you got a big old engine right here you got the clutch right here and then the transfer case and gearbox and transmission right here okay then the drive shaft, then the prop shaft, or prop, drop, then prop and, and, and forward. So, in order for me to get to that clutch, I've got to take this shaft off, that shaft off, then take the transfer and gearbox, push them back, hope that it doesn't fall off and squish me, just to get to that clutch plate. I get to that clutch plate, I then got to see is it a 10 inch clutch, 11 inch clutch, or even God forbid a 12 inch clutch. If it's a 12 inch, fuck, most places don't keep them in stock anymore because they're based on asbestos. If it's a 10 inch clutch, Fuck, most people barely keep that in stock because it's a common clutch and most people sell those pretty fucking quick. But if it's the 11 inch clutch, hey, I've got plenty of those in stock. Take one down, take it, pass it around, 
all get a consensus, which by the way, for most 86 Broncos that have the original motor and transmission, it is an 11 inch clutch. There you go. Then you take that clutch, put it in, clutch alignment tool, set it all up, put your clutch plate on, torque all your bolts down, make sure they're torqued, mark all your bolts to make sure that you've actually torqued them, because I have come across ones where there's no bolts whatsoever holding the fucking clutch plate in. Check, but before you do that, you've got to check the fly, flywheel and make sure there's a smooth surface, no nicks, no bounds, no, no brown, no spots, things of that nature. And if it does, guess what? You've got to take that flywheel off. You've got to get it resurfaced. Joy. More manual labor. And if that's fine, and you've got the clutch in stock, and you put the new clutch in, you've then got to put it in, line it up, bolt it up, mark all the bolts, then take the trans transmission transfer case, slide that fucker forward, mark that up, you know, tighten the bolts up, mark the bolts, right on the transfer case, when the clutch was changed and at what miles, for the next mechanic, be nice, then slide the prop shaft back in, slide the four-wheel drive shaft back in, get up, and pray, pray, that no hydraulic fluid left. If it did, you've got to bleed the entire system, and then that's where your extra labor comes in. And you want me to do all of that in 10 minutes? No. That's a minimum of a four to six hour work. And at $22.50 an hour, do you want to do that? No. This is why you came to my shop in the first place. So don't bitch at me about the bill at the end. All right? This is why most shops okay we'll do a full bumper to bumper work over on your car inspect it see what's wrong with it advise you what's wrong with it and then some shops do charge you for that yes but they will credit you for the work that gets done at that shop so that's what i used to do so someone would come in say with a oh god forbid that red fucking thunderbird one of my friends sherry she brought her 96 ford thunderbird in Inline four twin inline four turboed Thunderbird brought it in. It was always leaking oil out of the the, the 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 top end of the motor. Always, no matter how many times I replaced the gasket, turns out it was a crack, a hairline crack in the valve cover. That's where the oil was spurting out of. I realised this. I said to her, "It will take me about an hour minimum to replace that valve cover." She goes, why? It's just a valve cover, four bolts and swap it. goes, yes, but you've been driving the car. The oil is hot. The engine is hot. I'm not going to burn myself. I need that engine to cool down first. And she was like, oh, fair enough. So we parked the car, let it cool down. I had the part in stock, took it off the shelf, walked over, popped her bonnet, giggity. Literally, six bolts later, new gasket, new top, bolted it down, checked, made her start the engine, Get it up to about three, four thousand RPM. Hold it. Look, no oil squirting anywhere. I even, I even dumped like three cans of brake clean on that damn motor. Sparkling, not an issue. Changed the oil for her as well. She even brought the oil and the filter. Changed it for her for free. Marked on the new filter her mileage. Again, you're welcome, next mechanic. When that was done, I moaned at her because it was a Fram filter, not a Wix filter. I prefer Wix over Fram. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, once that was done, I told her to drive it to price and back, which is about 80 miles, 90 miles round trip. So do get the price, go to Walmart, get what you want, come back, come back. So she did. She came back. She goes, I don't know what you've done, but this motor no longer bogs on acceleration it no longer she 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 was always having problems getting the car to to shit and get and get going it always and take off and i'm like yeah that's because you had a vacuum leak she's like what goes replacing that valve cover sealed off the vacuum leak so you've got no vacuum so your turbo is actually doing its job now and i changed the air filter on the turbo and on her uh, main main air filters. I changed all the filters for her as well. And I said to her, that car, that motor will last you now for at least another 10,000, 20,000 miles. She still fucking has that car. No joke. She drove that car from Utah 
to Tennessee with a U-Haul trailer strapped to the back. She still has it. She still does monthly maintenance on it. She asks when she takes it into the guy that she has. I think it's like a, a, a local area Jiffy Lube. She demands that the guy, that the tech, writes the mileage on the filter and she demands a Wix filter, not a Fram. <laughs> and the guy goes, why do you do it? She goes, because a really good mechanic friend of mine pulled my, ar my ass out of a fire once and since that day I've been trying to pass it forward. So do yourself a favour, guys. Pass it forward. Coffee's done. Video's done. Anyway, guys, just wanted to give you an update. What's going on? Till then, see you in the next one. Ciao.